Hey everyone, my name is Andrew Warner. I'm the founder of Bot Academy. I'm laughing because I've said this now a couple of times today. And um, joining me is Duncan Felix, one of our members. He's someone who's gotten uh, clients. And I'm glad to have him here because this is the number one question that our members have and the people who want to sell chatbots have. It's, I get it. You guys can teach me how to create a chatbot. I have confidence that I can do it. But hey, guys, can you please tell me, teach me, show me how to get clients? And so because of that request, I invited Duncan Felix on here to talk about how he got his first client. Duncan, good to have you here. Hey, thanks for having me. Do you remember how you got your first client? Yeah, so I actually had partnered up with someone else um, in the course. And we actually met before the Bot Academy course started. So we met through, I think you have your... Uh, paid Mixergy, uh, like the Mixergy Insiders. I don't know what it's called, but the, yeah. that Facebook group. Yep. We met through that. And the um, two of you connected through that, and then you heard yeah. about chatbots independently and both both joined Bot Academy. Yeah. Uh, and then you recognize each other and you said, hey, you're the guy for Mixergy. Exactly, yeah. You know what? It used to be at Mixer, that at Bot Academy, everyone knew that I was doing Mixergy, but now we've started to expand the group of people who hear about Bot Academy. So most people don't know that on Mixergy.com, I've been doing interviews with proven tech software entrepreneurs for the last 10 years. And uh, there's a premium product that Duncan joined. So you guys teamed up. How did, how did that uh, team up help you get your first client? So, um, yeah, it was, uh, my friend Jamie, who um, he had a lot more sales experience and he um the first client was actually a company that i had worked with before doing some other work for um but he was able to just like coach me a little bit and kind of give me some pointers and things and like uh some really useful um just different ways to think about sales and that really helped um and we just worked on that together and um i was like he was in australia and I was in London and the company's in London. So I was like going to meet them in person and like doing the demo and things. But then I would send videos back and forth um, being like, oh, how do I, how do I do this next bit? How do I do the next bit of the, of the sales call? Well, so I did, did this. Um, it was kind of because um, it was like a larger organization. It mm -hmm. kind of took a couple of meetings to close them. Um, and I did that all in person. Okay. How much of a sale was it? What did you guys uh, charge? Yeah, so um, we the we did it on like a monthly basis, um, and so the first month was five thousand uh, pounds, which I think is like six and a half thousand US dollars. Yep. Um, and uh, we kind of um, did a bit off a little bit more than we could chew because we were saying like we're going to do. You know, I'll get, in, get into a bit more detail about what this company is and what we're doing for them exactly. But basically, we were going to do like um, two or three quite um, detailed, elaborate sequences every week for them. Mm -hmm. And Every week, multiple yeah, sequences. exactly. Wait, what do they do that they need that many sequences? Yeah, so what they do, um, they are a NGO, kind of like a political activism um, organization but they're not it's not like for a political party it's they have about four and a half million members and their members basically vote on different issues that they think are important Got that it. they think need to get some like uh publicity behind them and so they do a lot of email marketing and we thought hey this is like a a better way to do what or way to add to what they're already doing uh, okay. And so when you couldn't live up to what you promised them because you bit off more than you could chew, how did that conversation go down? Yeah. I mean, it was, I wouldn't exactly say that we couldn't live up to what we promised them. It was more a case of we hadn't worked with, with like such a large organization before and just the working relationship was, um, it's just, there's a lot more management involved, I find, like, because the clients I've had since then are, like, much smaller, like, more entrepreneurial, um, and, um, like, a big organization, there's, a lot, like, a lot of different people that need to prove things and stuff, and it just, that whole process was completely new to us, and so, whilst we could actually deliver on what we'd said, 
kind of going back and forth and like making changes to things and doing stuff in time uh, when they want to be very responsive to kind of current news that's coming out and want to be able to like send out stuff, um, you know, the next day based on a news thing. That whole thing was uh, a bit intense and that was, that was difficult to do. That was, um, yeah, that was tricky. But you ended up doing it, living up to your commitment for the client. You told us before we started, I learned a lot and I got a lot of practice very fast with this first client, right? Yeah, for sure. So it was because we were, um, I mean, all, most of the, the work I've done since has been like you build out a kind of one main flow that things kind of branch off of. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you've got some uh, different campaigns that work based on that. But this was like every single campaign that we do is like this entire quite involved project uh, because we were just following the process that we learned in the Boss Academy course of like building out those sequences and thinking about um, how to make this like a conversation, how to do these things. So it's really good practice, but it was maybe a bit optimistic to think that we could like keep at that for with that amount of detail and everything, uh, like twice a week. You told me before we officially started that, um, you've had clients who you got retainer agreements with, and you've also had clients who, uh, switched from having you build out their chat bots to then you training their people and their people taking over. Let's talk about both of those before we end. How about retainer clients? What strategies do you have for people like Brent and Ron who are listening to us who want to get retaining clients? And retaining, of course, are people who pay you a monthly uh, amount to maintain and grow their chat bot. Yeah, so um, it's just about finding ways to give value on an ongoing basis. Um, it's like, I think people maybe overcomplicate the idea of like, or they, they get kind of seduced by the idea of having like a lot of retainer clients and then it becomes about them. But it's like just about focusing on the client, focusing on giving them value on a consistent basis and thinking of things that you can do to, to do that. Like what? Um, you know, think about a specific client. By the way, watch your mic. Every time yeah. it hits your collar, it's making uh, a little bit of noise. Um, yeah. Think about one specific client. Can you mention one by name who, who gives you a retainer? Um, again, a bit like Nick, these are all totally fine. E-commerce clients. And they so it's an, think about an e-commerce client who's paying you on a monthly basis. What's, what's the most important thing that you do for that client, uh, every month that allows you to earn that money? Yeah. So at the moment there's, there's two main things. So one is that I'm, I'm not necessarily going in and like managing every single aspect and like building everything myself, but mm -hmm. I'm um, basically giving them options and ideas about different strategies based on the other things that they're doing in, in their business okay. that they can, they can do. For example. And then if they want to go for one of them. So um, yeah, just about like, um, so, you know, if they want to run a contest, then thinking about ways to, um, you know, that's something they can do through Messenger. I was also thinking about like um, posts that create engagement that then they can um, capture the comments and then build things around that. So, okay. And by the um, way, just watch your mic again. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's up against your collar. So what you're saying is they would say, we want to do a post on Facebook and you're part of that conversation. You say, Hey, you know what guys, if you do a post on your Facebook page, you can also use it to drive chatbot subscriptions if you encourage people to comment, right? Yeah. And so and, understanding what yeah. they're doing and finding ways to marry it to chatbots. Yeah, exactly. And, Let, and also mm -hmm. taking a look at what uh, other things are kind of going on with what seems to be working for other people and basically just like creating content that I guess people might use, um, you know, to promote the idea of bots, but I'm just trying to keep it really focused to that specific client and say, Hey, here's some things that you could, you could potentially do. Um, okay. yeah. And there's a second part as well, yeah. which is, um, you know, it, um, 
this is also about the customer service side. Mm -hmm. So recently I've been doing a lot of work with dialogue flow and automating a lot of customer service stuff. And that okay. requires kind of ongoing training to make it more accurate. Oh, because your client is going to be handling all the chat uh, that comes in from customer service. You want to make sure that you train them to understand how to respond, how to maintain it, how to clean it out. Mm, yeah. No, actually it's like I'm using, um, natural language processing. So I'm training the machine ah, learning okay. to understand the different customer questions. So if someone says like, how much is shipping or how much does postage cost or it will understand those are the same thing, but it takes time for it to get questions coming in and be told what they mean. So okay. over time that gets more accurate. And so you're watching what people are saying. So you know what, Ari Brog, who's watching um, us live here today, he said that 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 worked really cool, but it's an intense amount of work to do dialogue flow because you have to just keep duplicating your work over and over for every spot where people could be chatting, right? Um, I'm finding that, and maybe it's just the clients I've had and the, the types of questions they have about their products, but I'm finding that this, uh, the 80-20 the principle applies here. So yeah, there's always going to be like weird edge cases mm -hmm. of people that have very specific questions, but what the value that I'm, or my, my offer to these clients is that the goal is to automate 80%. And so 80% of the questions is basically just like the same kind of questions about the product, about shipping, tracking information, all those kind of things. And okay. then the 20%, like the uh, human support team are, are going to pick those they up. They could take on. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when you sell a client on a retainer service, do you do it when you sell them on the chatbot setup or do you do it after you, you do? Yeah. Same thing. You and, sign them up and yeah. you say, here's how much it's going to cost to set it up. Here's how much it's going to cost for me to maintain it. Do they balk at that point and say, hey, wait a minute, I just wanted you to set up a chatbot. How are you now getting paid for the rest of my life? Um, yeah, I haven't really had that issue really. Okay. Um, I definitely like I do it upfront and usually, and I don't do proposals or anything like that. I just do it on the phone okay. and just say, this is how it works. Do you want to, do you want to do it? Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah. All right. Um, Randy Dickinson, who's watching us is saying, Hey, what's the difference between a monthly retainer and a monthly main maintenance fee to maintain the bot? It's essentially the same, right? We're just looking at two different words. It seems like the word retainer is the one that most agencies use. So you might as well stick with that, right? Yeah. And I feel like the word maintenance kind of right. doesn't really focus on making it better. It's more like, let's just keep it working and keep it the same, which right. things, that's not as good. In my mind. Okay. Let me close out with this final thing that you brought up before we started, which is when your clients say, Duncan, thanks for setting this up. We got this from here. How do you feel about that? Yeah, so this is definitely, um, at first I was like, oh, this, so many things we can do. Like I, I really wanna keep on doing. But um, yeah, it's, I think it's similar to what Nick said. It's just about like, it's about creating the value for the client. And um, recently I've been creating um, some training materials for people and, um, you know, really having this like decentralized model where they don't always have to come to me for information. And it's like, um, I'd rather just be the source and uh, like of the value and however the, they actually technically get that value is, is not really so relevant. I don't mind if I'm doing it or like showing them how to do it or anything like that. Okay. Um, yeah. You know what, when I was looking at uh, agencies to manage our CRM, the best one said to me, Andrew, I will be training your people. Everything that I do, I'll be doing a screen capture of, and then I'm going to add it to our personal library of videos that you get. I said, what's that? And it turns out a lot of agencies do this. They'll set up a portal for their clients where their clients can not just message the agency, but also go back in and see how-to videos of everything that they did. And now this how-to video, this, this guide for the team becomes a valuable thing on its own. And yes, the team will grow and people will take on the work that you're doing, but you're now coming in as a guide, as a teacher, and there's still ongoing value there. 
All right, Duncan, thanks so much for doing this. If people want to connect with you, what's a good way for them to find you? Where do they find yeah. you? Yeah, um, so my, my website is chatmarketers.com. Chatmarketers.com, it's a good name. Yeah. Thanks, uh, you know what, I, I gotta end it with this. The best part of doing this, you've been smiling the whole time you're doing this, I know you love this. I am so tactical that I never hit on the emotional part of doing this. What is the best part of knowing how to get clients, of knowing that you're servicing them well, of having the confidence to say, if a client leaves me, it's not the end of the world, I could find others. Talk about that. Yeah, I mean, we could talk for another two hours about mindset. Um, I've learned a lot about myself yep. through this process. Um, but yeah, just, it's an abundance mindset. That's what it comes down to. Um, just, there's so many businesses that could benefit from this. Um, and it's just, it's just more fun having that kind of, uh, ability to, to do that. Um, and it just makes it everything like a fun puzzle. Yeah. And we're in a growth space. People want this, they need this, they're looking for it. And now you're in a space where you can figure it out learn it, puzzle it out, and then bring it to them and get more and more clients. All right. Thanks so much for being on here. Congratulations on the success of your business. People are going to be able to see you online and hopefully emulate the success that you've had and build up their own businesses. Thanks so much, Duncan. Cool. Thank you. All right.